Assalamu alaikum. Hello dear students. Welcome to the online class of Dhaka Women College. I am here with you. This is Ashfiya Minshorna, lecturer, Department of English, Dhaka Women College. I hope all of you are doing well, maintaining health rules and social distancing in this pandemic situation and also carrying on your studies as well. Today, I am going to deliver my lecture on the course Literary Criticism from Victorian to Modern Age, course code 241115. Today, I will give you an introduction with the writer and a short summary of the text as you can get a clear idea about the whole text. So, now let's start our today's class. The Study of Poetry this criticism was published in 1888 and it was written by Matthew Arnold. His life duration is 1822 to 1888. Life and work of Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold was one of the foremost poets and critics of Victorian age. And the time duration of Victorian age is 1832 to 1901. That means it was in 19th century. Matthew Arnold is regarded as the father of modern literary criticism. He also wrote extensively on social and cultural issues, religion and education. Birth. Matthew Arnold was born on 24 December 1822. That means it was on the Christmas Eve and he was born on Laleham, Middlesex, on England into an influential English family. His father's name was Dr. Thomas Arnold who was the famed headmaster of rugby school and his mother's name was Mary Penrose. His wife was Frances Lucy and uh, this couple had six children. Education. First of all, Matthew Arnold started his primary education at rugby school during his father's headmastership. After that, he attended at Winchester and then in 1841, he matriculated from Balliol College at Oxford where he studied classical literature and got the Mendicate Prize for writing the poem Cromwell in 1843. While at Oxford, he was an intimate friend of Arthur Hawklock, whose date he wrote the poem uh, Thyrsis, which was published in 1866. Now let's see the profession of Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold worked as a teacher of classics at rugby and it was the beginning of his profession. After leaving this profession, he became the secretary to Lord Lansdowne and uh, here uh, he worked 35 years till nearly the end of his life. And then in 1857, he became the professor of poetry at Oxford and uh, retained this profession for 10 years. Arnold died at the age of 65, suddenly of heart failure on 15 April 1888 at Liverpool, England. Now let's see the work of Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold has written many poems. Among them, some of his best known poems are Dover Beach, Thyrsis, Rugby Chapel, Sorab and Rustam, The Scholar Gypsy, Empedocles on Etna. Critical work. The time beginning from 1853 to the last day of Arnold's life was devoted to the study and writing of literary criticism and some of his famous criticisms are prefaces, essay on criticism. Uh, this writing has two series, 
culture and anarchy the study of poetry our today's text literature and dogma the function of poetry and present time these were arnold's works he wrote both poems and literary criticism and became famous for both of this writing now let's see the influences that means what were the influences on writing of matthew arnold or what things influenced him much in his writing first of all dr thomas arnold that means his father he had a great influence on a writer or critic matthew arnold as he started his primary education at his father's rugby school and the second one is impact of the age that means the age when he belonged to um, it was the victorian age and the third one is his knowledge of classical literature then goethe the german critic saint bilbe senecure and tenny the french writers they had the formative influence up on the critic matthew arnold these were the life and work of matthew arnold now we will have a summary of our today's text the study of poetry the study of poetry is a literary criticism written by matthew arnold in this critical essay arnold criticizes the art of poetry as well as the art of criticism at first this criticism was written as an introduction of an anthology the english poets by t h word and it was published in 1880 after that in 1888 This introduction was published as a literary criticism and it was titled as The Study of Poetry. This criticism clearly falls into two parts. The first part deals with the nature and function of poetry and the second part deals with a survey of English poets. We know that Matthew Arnold belongs to the Victorian age. and after the industrial revolution of england the english society was divided into two parts in the first part there were the industrialists or the upper class people and in the second part there were the working class or lower class people in that time society was degrading their morals values and intellect and as a great poet and as a great philosopher matthew arnold was not happy to see his society in such condition in that society people gave more importance to material possession rather than spiritual or intellectual values and they were guided by low moral values english nation at that time was provincial and uncivilized so arnold felt that it is his duty to bring awareness to the nation and that's the reason he put high seriousness in his poetry and considered poetry higher among all religion science and philosophy arnold believes that all these suffers from charlatanism now the question is what is charlatanism charlatanism is full of fake pretenders and deceivers it's a show of knowledge where there is no true knowledge it's nothing but a fake presentation of knowledge without any knowledge according to arnold uh, he considered religion as charlatanism because its many beliefs and facts were shaken by science and many times it's proven wrong he also considered science as charlatanism because he doesn't believe that science is a field of knowledge and it is falsely presented as a new arbiter of knowledge he also consider uh, 
philosophy as charlatanism because he says that philosophy itself is unable to answer its unsolved questions. So he considered poetry greater among all these. He says that poetry gives spiritual and emotional help to man. It is successful method to understand life or to interpret life. So poetry is much important to human life. Arnold says religion, science and philosophy are incomplete without poetry. He defined poetry as a criticism of life. Its power of sustaining man will depend on its power of criticism of life. Arnold says that poetry should maintain high order of excellence. It should maintain higher standard than other discipline. And he says that it should be just strictly than other subjects. He says, as poetry sustain and delight man, only the best poetry should be created. The study of poetry was not meant only for the professional man of letters, but rather for general middle class reader who have some interest in poetry. So he concerned with the idea that how a good poetry should be judged and evaluated. So he advises his reader to read poems carefully and, and then judge it. He advises his reader not only to give positive criticism but also to give negative criticism. If they do so, next time the poet will give far better poem than he produced before. Arnold says when one reads a poetry, he tends to estimate whether it is the best form or not and it happens in three ways. Historical estimates, personal estimates and real estimates. Historical estimates means when readers are swept away by reputation of the artist and his biographical written and prejudice his work and give more importance to his poems and works. For example, if we read a poem by John Milton and we know that this poem is written by John Milton and we know before that he is a great poet, then uh, the reader unconsciously give much importance to that work as it is written by a great poet and this is historical estimate. And the second one is personal estimates. What is personal estimates? When an individual judge a poem or any literary work according to his or her like or dislike, this is called personal estimate. For example, if I like romantic poetry, then the Victorian poetry will not make that much appeal to me. But this doesn't mean that uh, the Victorian poetry is not good. So, uh, the third one is real estimates. This is an unbiased viewpoint, but it is often surpassed by historical estimate. So, Arnold suggests that if you want to overcome this problem, you must analyze a poem through touchstone method. Now, what is touchstone method? Touchstone method is the act of comparison of the poem with reference to the masters of the field. According to Arnold, ancient poetry was best because it follows both truth and high seriousness. So he considered Homer, Dante, Milton and Shakespeare as the touchstone poets. He advises his reader and critic if you want to judge a poem or a poet, you should judge with the reference of these great poets. Arnold says touchstone method helps to judge both quality and quantity of the poem. It judges manner and style and matter and substance. He says matter and substance of poem is only good when it follows high degree of truth and seriousness. To maintain high seriousness, Arnold even criticized a great poet like Chaucer. Chaucer was a very good writer and wrote many good poems. Arnold says Chaucer has a humanistic view of life. He has liquidity of diction. 
he also rightly says the father of poetry but he was not classical as dante and homer because he lacks seriousness in his poems Arnold also criticizes Thomas Gray and says he is the scantiest and frailest of the classics in our poetry but he is classics that means though he is a classic he is the oldest kind of classics these were the main points of our today's text the literary criticism the study of poetry now let's sum up the whole text first of all matthew arnold considered poetry higher among all like religion science philosophy then he tells about the importance of poetry because it helps human to be emotional so we must follow a standard in poetry he says to judge poetry on both bases on positive and negative bases then he says to avoid three kinds of estimates the historical estimates the personal estimates and the real estimates and to avoid these three kinds of fallacy he advises his readers to judge a poem with the help of touchstone method and uh, he considered homer dante shakespeare and milton as his touchstone poets he also criticizes chaucer for not maintaining high seriousness in his poem and he criticizes thomas gray robert burns and 18th century poets like dryden and pope he also compares robert burns with chaucer this was the complete summary of our today's lesson now we will see some important questions on the basis of this text here are some questions on the basis of our today's lecture I am here giving you the broad questions and if you can take preparation well for these questions you will also be able to answer the short questions among these topics and these questions are discuss the nature and function of poetry according to Matthew Arnold number 2 write a critical note on arnold's idea that poetry is the criticism of life number 3 what is touchstone method what are its merits or demerits number 4 give an account of matthew arnold as a critic these are the broad questions you can also take preparations as a short questions from the topic charlatanism estimates historical estimates real estimates and personal estimates and uh, you first of all you have to read the text and uh, understand the whole text clearly this was all about today's class i hope you have understand this class and if you have any problem regarding this lecture feel free to ask me i am always here to help you just carry on your studies and score a good result for your exam see you in the next class thank you all